So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. It is a nice day in Tennessee. Unlike yesterday, it was about 45 degrees. The footage that you guys saw with the first of this video was yesterday. That was me and dad unloading the kiln. We took out some white oak and red oak, and most of it was quarter sawn. We got that stacked in the shop. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it, but I may put some of it on the website in a few weeks. I'll let you guys know if I do so. But we got the kiln emptied out. It took us the biggest part of the day, but I'm glad I got that done. I tell you, that's one of the hardest operations down here at my business is emptying out the kiln because my wood shop, even though it's good size, it's 30 by 40, it's not big enough for me to drive into and set down a thousand board feet of lumber. I wish I would have made that bigger. If I could do it over with, I probably would have doubled the size of that building, but at the time, that's all I could afford, so it is what it is. So if you're new to this channel, this is our Nile L200 Pro Kiln with chamber. Nile also sells this chamber, or the building rather, with the kiln. And it's a really good unit. I use it all the time. I've had it for about three years now. Not had any trouble out of it. This is the L200 model, and the Pro Kiln part has to do with the controller on the outside. But this kiln, friends, is extremely nice. You can do 4,000 board feet in here at one time. I usually do about 2,000 or 1,500. I don't think I've ever had it matched out on the capacity, but it does a really good job. Has plenty of airflow. You got some baffles up there that come down on top of your lumber. And those fans have bow door motors and they produce a lot of CFM in here. I think that's the right turn, CFM for your uh, airflow. And over here on this wall is a very important little instrument. This tells you the humidity inside of the kiln and it also tells you the temperature. And these yellow wires, if you're wondering what's going on with that, that's my moisture probes that go outside to a Delmhurst moisture probe meter. And that's how I can tell the moisture content of the lumber as it's dry. Every wire has three plugs on it and this corresponds to some little uh, pins that go inside the lumber. And that's how you could tell the core and the outside core temperature of the lumber as it's drying. That's very important right there as well. And real briefly here, friends, outside, there's the Pro Controller unit. It's a touch screen, it works really good. It has all kinds of features on it, more features that I actually use. And then this little box right here is the Delmhurst system. And those yellow wires that we just looked at go into this right here, and that's how you can tell the moisture of your lumber. But this right here won't do it alone. You have to get your Delmhurst moisture meter and plug it into this, 
and that's how you get your reading. That's another great feature for a kiln, friends. If you have a kiln and you don't have a way of checking the moisture on the lumber inside the kiln while it's drying, call up Delmhurst and buy this. Not sponsored by them, I bought this with my own money. It was about $600 and the meter's about 500, so about $1,100 and you got a foolproof system to monitor the moisture of your lumber while it's in the kiln. Alright guys, I finally got it loaded up. And if you're wondering how many board feet we're looking at here, I would say about maybe 1,200. I didn't really measure it out good, but I'm thinking probably about 1,200 feet. Pretty good size load for this kiln. 
I've got four sets of these moisture plugs, but since all of this wall, uh, walnut, my goodness, all of this cherry was sawn at the same time, came from the same forest, and it's been air drying for the same amount of time, there's no need to really put four probes in this lumber. Two is plenty. I could probably get away just doing one if I wanted to. Lower that baffle down on the top. Now this cherry was air dried first for about six months. And since it's four quarter, it's not going to get any drier than it is right now. I checked it yesterday and most of it's about 17 and 18% on the moisture content. So that old myth about taking one year per inch is not accurate nowadays. It may have been accurate 100 years ago when people didn't have climate controlled houses. But nowadays, everybody has a heat pump or some kind of air condition system in their house. They can regulate that throughout the year and therefore your lumber needs to be brought down if it's gonna be used for interior projects to at least 8% or lower. And it's also gotta be sterilized to kill all the bugs. So that myth where they say year per inch is not accurate guys. This lumber is at 18% right now, 18, 17. Some of it could be 15 if we got a little bit more airflow than the rest of it. But that's as dry as that lumber will ever get. Based on my region, which is Northeast Tennessee, the EMC for outside is about 15 to 18%, a little bit lower in the winter time, maybe 14% when it gets dry. But in the summertime, it's around 18 or 19, maybe 20 on a real humid day. So that tells you this lumber is as dry as it can get outside. So if I let this sit out here for one year, it's gonna be the same moisture content that it is right now. It's not gonna go down unless you put it into a kiln and control the environment and get it down to 8% or 10% or whatever you're after. My hopes is get this to about 8% then I'll sterilize it for 24 hours at 150 degrees. And when you sterilize the lumber, you bring up the temperature inside of this kiln to 150 degrees, which makes the lumber temperature on the inside of the core of the lumber be 133 degrees, which is the required temperature to kill all the buds, eggs and the larva, anything going on that lumber, 133 degrees, excuse me, 133 degrees We'll kill it with no problem. And also guys, here's another lesson in why you should anchor seal your lumber. My buddy Robert over at Hobby Hardwoods, and I'm actually wearing Robert's hat today. Shout out to my buddy Robert down in Alabama. If you wanna watch a sawmill channel that I watch to learn stuff from, go watch Robert. There's a link down below to his videos. But as I was saying, he did a video on anchor seal the other day and he, he knocked it out of the park on what he was talking about. Everything he said was right which it usually is. Robert's usually right about sawmill stuff. That's why I call him for advice all the time. But this stuff right here, friends, was anchor sealed. And as you can see, we have very limited checks on the lumber since it was anchor sealed. All right, guys, now I need to put some baffles on both sides and I'm not gonna sit here and make you guys watch me do that. See if this still works. I think it does. All right, guys, looks like that still works. Check out the fans and make sure everything's going to work okay. You never know. So it doesn't really matter to me what I'm going to dry. The first 24 hours, I like to take it easy on the lumber and kind of ease myself into the drying stage. I don't want to really uh, run this up to like 110 degrees the very first day and really shop the lumber. I like to set the dry bulb, which is the temperature, to about 90 degrees. And I usually set my wet bulb for about 85, leave a five degree depression for the first 24 hours, just to let this lumber get used to being in the high heat before we start cranking it up to 110 and then 120. of you that might be interested this is the control screen for the l200 pro and right now the current conditions inside the kiln the dry bulb which is the temperature 
64.7 degrees and since I have it set on 90 it's calling for the heater so you see the heater with the green color right there which means it's on so we're getting the heat inside the kiln and that will run until we reach 90 degrees and then it will cut off until it needs to come back on again.